Within the military, there's something called the Seaburn Response Enterprise. And if there an event is ever to take place in the United States that is uh, weapon, weapons of mass destruction, Seaburn related, the first personnel that are gonna be on scene is gonna be a civil support team. That immediate response team sets the foundation. So that's what I mean by tip of the spear. We should be those first assets on ground. We're considered a tier one response asset for the California National Guard. We're the start of the Saberni response enterprise. What that brings to the incident commander is the ability to immediately have somebody to liaison with civilian first responders and the, the military response after that, which in the military is called DISCA, Defense Support to Civilian Agencies. So that's the first, one of the first primary things we bring to the incident command. But within our team, we have sections, and within those sections, we have personnel who are getting in hazmat suits and going downrange. Well, those personnel, when they're downrange, they have to come back, and somebody has to clean them. We also have a decon section. Their responsibility is ensuring that they know how to properly decontaminate any hazmat that might be on their suits. Throughout that entire operations, communications is happening and we need to be able to talk with the personnel downrange. If we're downrange, coordinated with fire, we also have to be hearing what fire is doing and vice versa. So we also have a communication section that's able to link all that communication so we're all on the same page. And then uh, while all that is happening, there's a command section. And what the command section is doing is they're linked up with the incident commander fire chief, hazmat group soup, and that way communication is uh, consistently flowing all the way from the hazmat situation all the way back to the incident command post. As far as decontamination goes and the fire department and how they execute decontamination and how the civil support team executes decontamination, fire department is going to set up a mass decon line. You're going to have a lot of people who are already scared, panicking, don't know what to do, and you're telling them you can't move until you're deconned. You can't do that one at a time. You have to do that, you have to do that as quickly as possible. The fire hazmat is gonna be responsible for that, for that mass decon. On the civil support team, we're focused on technical decon. We're focusing on the first responders who can wait, who, can't, who do understand and will not panic. And will give us that opportunity to properly decon them so they can assist in the mass decontamination process. The internet has made this job more important because the access to the information to bring harm to our citizens, our country, is open. Anyone can get it. And I, sometimes I feel like we live in a bubble where we feel that we can't be touched uh, because you know, this, is, this is, to me, the greatest nation. But the internet has changed that where what used to be hard to get to, information on how to harm people, is now easy. Everybody has access to information to bring harm. And, uh, you know, once again, I'm, I'm on the tip of that spear to help all the, the first responding agencies to prevent that from happening. If I were an instructor, and I was talking to new firefighters, I would tell them the less they say and the more they soak up, the better off they will be. That their, their, their minds should be a sponge. Forget all that you know. You know nothing. You know nothing. Listen to the guys that have been there. And um, just listen to them. Don't listen to respond. Just listen to understand. That's what I would tell them.